Okay, we are going to graph y is equal to cosecant x. And you have to remember that tangent, secant, cotangent, and cosecant, they all have vertical isotopes for the graphs. Therefore, we have to find the domain first. To do so, we are going to look at this equation as y equals to, and this is what we have to remember really, really well. Cosecant x is the same as 1 over sine x. Okay? So you see we end up with a fraction. Therefore, we have to make sure that the denominator is not equal to 0 for the domain. So let's put down make sure the bottom, which is sine x, we don't want this to be 0. Okay? So this is how we look for the domain in the fraction situation. And now, sine of 1 and go is 0. Let's look at the unit circle. Okay? So here we go. This is my unit circle, but this time we have to look for the y value because sine is the y value on the unit circle. I want the y value to be 0. That means we have this point to be considered because this is 1, 0, right? We also have this point to be considered because this point right here is negative 1, 0. We want to look for the angle ingredients for the graph purpose, okay? So right here we have 0 radians, and let's turn this way, we get pi, right, that's 180 degree, but that's pi. So let's put down, if you don't want sine x to be 0, that means we don't want x to be 0, we don't want x to be pi, and so on. So let me just put down these two first. We don't want x to be 0, we don't want x to be pi. Are there any more? Yeah, we can go from here, back here, 0 is the same as 2 pi, right, once you keep rotating. So we also have 2 pi, and you know the next one is going to be 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, and so on. We can also go backwards. So if you have, or go backwards this way actually. From 0, go backwards, we get negative pi. That's, let me just write it down better. Negative pi. And then you go this way, you get negative 2 pi, and so on. And we can just put down this right here, negative pi negative 2 pi, and then keeps on going this way, keeps on going that way. These are the numbers that will make sine x you know, to be 0. And for the graph, these are the vertical isotopes. So we are ready to put down these numbers on the graph, and we have vertical isotopes there. So we have 0, this is right here, and then let me just indicate this is my pi, and this is my 2 pi, and here is my negative pi, and here is my negative 2 pi. And these values here, we all have vertical asymptote, the vertical dashed lines. So let's go ahead and draw that. Like this. And just go ahead and do this. Right? So yeah. Okay, so uh, perhaps the traditional approach is that they may ask you to sketch sine x first and then do the reciprocal rule, things like that. But then you can just do it this way. Um, yeah, This way it's more consistent because it works for cosecant, secant, cotangent, and also tangent. Okay, More consistent, you find the domain first and then you um, do what I'm about to show you. Okay, so a few things that you have to remember for secant and cosecant, the graph is going to be a u up and a u down, a u up and a u down, and a bunch of that, okay? For tangent was going up, going up, going up, or maybe going down, going down, going down. But anyways, um, I'm just once again going to use the table to help me out. So this time I'm going to uh, have a table here, I have the x value, and I have the y value, which is, I want to look for this as 1 over sine x. Okay, because it's easier to work out uh, with sine x. A few things I'm going to use. In fact, I just need two points. Um, usually, I like to say we cannot go wrong zero, <laughs> except for this one, because we will go wrong zero. We don't want x to be zero. We have a vertical asymptote there, right? So we are not going to use zero. So what number should we use? Look at the vertical asymptotes. We don't want to use zero. We don't want to use pi. Let's use a number in between. Okay, always do that. Between 0 and pi, we have pi over 2, right? So let's plug in pi over 2 for x. That means I have to work out 1 over sine of pi over 2, right? 
All right, and what's sine of pi over 2? Sine of pi over 2, you can just look at the unit circle. Pi over 2 is right here, and the y value here is 1. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. So we have pi over 2, comma, 1. And let me just put a point right here. And I'm also going to look for from pi to 2 pi, the middle, we know that will be 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to use 3 pi over 2 right here. And to get 3 pi over 2, you can just look at this. I used it pi over 2. I should also use 3 pi over 2. It's in between of pi and 2 pi. Anyways, this is 1 over sine of 3 pi over 2. This is what? 3 pi over 2 is down here, sine is the y value. The y value here is negative 1. 1 over negative 1, we have negative 1. So, 3 pi over 2, comma, negative 1, which is the point right here. Two additional points like this will be enough because now, remember, it's u up, u down, u up, u down, and things like that for secant and cosecant. Right here, if you do it this way, if you pick a middle number in between of the acetals, this is going to be the lowest point. And you can just go ahead and do the u up right here. Right? Because this one is above that, so this one has to go up, right? And this one is below, so it has to go down. Okay, and this is pretty much one cycle, one copy, one period. You can just go ahead and do the, the same thing, the other one. So I'm going to kind of just copy this to that. But you see, this time I have to do it like this, right? So this graph will actually go right here. This part of the graph will actually go right here. And I will just go ahead and sketch this here. And then I'm going to put this here as well. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the graph of cosecant x. So of course, at the end, we'll write down the domain and the range for cosecant x. So let's put down d for the domain. Domain is a set of all the x such that we don't want x to be these values, right? And you see that we have 0, pi, 2 pi, and the next one is going to be 3 pi, and then 4 pi, 5 pi, and so on. And we also have negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, and so on, right? These are just the multiples of pi. So we can say it's a set of all the x such that x is not equal to a multiple of pi. To put that down, we can say we put down not equal to k pi, where k is an integer. Okay? And for the range for cosecant x, this is not as easy as tangent, so we have to uh, look at the graph carefully. For the range, it's a set of all the y values such that, and you see for this graph right here, this part of the graph right here, I will call this the upper u, okay, the u that's open up. Anyways, this u that's going up, the minimum value here is positive 1, starting from 1, and it goes up to infinity, right? So we can put down, the range is the set of all the y values such that y is bigger than or equal to 1. However, we do have the other part right here, right? And when we are putting down the range with the set the notation, and inside you see we are using inequality, we are going to put down the word or. If you're using interval notations, you have to put on the u for union. But right here, we are going to use or. Or what? Starting from negative 1 and go down below to negative infinity. And we can just write it down as y that's less than or equal to negative 1. And then we are done for the range. This looks like a 3. No, this is my set builder, my set notation. That's it.